Hey, David Rathoff here. Thanks for joining me. Hope you're having a good day. Today I'm going to be talking about customizing your terminal. Uh, this is one of the things that I always really like to do uh, when I'm getting started with a, either a new machine or a new virtual machine installation. Um, I, I find it just makes a huge difference to me and how I work. Um, and some of this is going to be uh, you know, adding a little bit of style to your terminal, making it look a little better, and then some of it's going to be actual like useful information um, that you're not going to just get by default. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'm going to just switch over to a view of this here. And in the background here, you can see this is my terminal. Um, now you'll notice a couple of interesting things. I've got um, this kind of uh, tree view here of uh, my source files for my project, and uh, the the uh, directories are in blue, the files are in green, and you'll notice they each have little icons next to them. So uh, like my TypeScript files here, I uh, have TypeScript icons, my uh, React, um, like JSX templates have a little React icon, folders have a folder icon, etc. cetera. Um, and actually I have just a ton of these uh, icons installed or glyphs installed, so really, if you do a lot of uh, stuff in the terminal and work in different kinds of projects, uh, it's handy because you can just tell right away, uh, you know, what kind of files you're working with, uh, which I find to be really cool. Uh, the other thing that's nice down here on the uh, kind of the prompt or command line is you'll see um, this line here, um, and it's including a bunch of information. It's um, telling us what folder we're currently in, and um, you know what the path is to that folder. And in addition to that, it's showing um, what version control system we're using. So it's got the little Git icon here. And then uh, it's also you know, showing us that we're in a branch and that branch is master and that there are changes on this branch. And it's giving us the timestamp uh, or the time at which we uh, ran this command, which is kind of handy um, if you're uh, needing to like go back through commands you've done and figure out when exactly you did something. And then just kind of finally down here at the actual prompt, you'll notice that's a little rocket. Um, this is what it'll show when things are successful, um, but you could also customize it to um, show something different like when a command failed. Um, so sometimes I'll use like a little skull emoji for that. And then uh, just alternatively, here's a different way of looking at the files in this directory. So this is just a uh, kind of verbose list of these, but again, it's got the uh, color coding and the icons next to them. Uh, and another cool thing about uh, this tool, it's called uh, Color LS. Um, it's one of the two main things I'm gonna be covering in this video, is uh, it also has some color coding that isn't obvious um, uh, with, this, with this setup, but basically um, the older the, your files are, you can have the dates listed in different colors. So you, uh, the way mine's configured is files will get like darker gray the older they are so that the newer changes kind of pop out. And then similarly with file sizes, you can do a, uh, the same thing where the bigger a file is, um, you can you can have those uh, the colors for that information uh, pop out a bit more. Um, so um, having shown you that, kind of the two main tools I'm going to be going through are color LS for this display. Um, and power level 10k, which um, is kind of like a nice wrapper for power level 9k. And each of those have a bunch of dependencies. And I'm just going to step through those quickly here. And I'll include links to all these dependencies in the description. But um, all of this relies on something called um, nerd fonts. Um, and what that is is just a big aggregation of a bunch of different fonts for showing glyphs, um, uh, being able, that will allow you to show glyphs in your terminal, um, show nice little icons in there. Um, so you'll, you'll need this, um, and there are pretty good installation instructions in here. And I would recommend following, uh, what they say, uh, pretty closely. Uh, one thing that's important is because this is just a big, uh, collection of a whole bunch of different assets that have changed over time. Um, you want to do git clone with depth of one, which will basically just get you the most recent version of the repo and not give you like the full history. Um, cause even with this, you're going to have a gigabyte worth of data uh, and you don't really want to, I think if you don't do this, you get at least like five gigs worth of data, which is like way too much uh, and you don't need it really. Um, so yeah, you want to get those installed first. Um, and then moving on to color LS, uh, one of the things that you'll need is an, uh, a Ruby installation that's easy to work with. 
Uh, I find that the default installs of Ruby on any operating system I use are kind of a pain because they make a bunch of assumptions about permissions um, that are often not what you want. So I'll typically install something um, like a version manager that's intended to isolate um, the the programming language and then also allow you to easily like install and change um, different versions of the language. So I use a RBENV uh, or RBENV and uh, there, there's a pretty good article here that will just walk you through exactly how to get that set up and how to um, configure your um, shell um, to know where it is. Um, but when, basically once you do that, you can install Ruby. And I think any modern version of Ruby will work. I use um, 2.6.5, but I think 2.7.0 <clears throat> is the most recent version. And even if you grab the wrong version, um, once you have RBENV installed, it's pretty easy to just install other versions if you need to. So you'll need that. Uh, I'm not going to go through the details of this, but I will link the article. Um, but the process is going to be pretty similar whether you're on um, uh, Linux or Mac. And then, um, yeah, finally here, you'll, you'll just want to go ahead and grab um, ColorLS. Um, and ColorLS is really cool. It has... A lot of really nice options just out of the box and then it also makes it very easy to con configure the colors to be what you want them to be so um kind of out of the box um, color ls will just give you like a tabular view um but it will go ahead and include the related gif uh sorry the related glyph or icon for the file alongside it um but there's lots of different options for how you present the information so here is just you know just a list of files um where if you go down a little bit further here, you can see how to get, um, also have it include hidden files that begin with a dot. Um, there's a couple options for doing that. Uh, you can also do things like tree, uh, this detailed view here, which is like, I guess dash L is for long, where you get all the details about uh, permissions, owner, group, file size, date. And you'll notice there's some color coding here on the date. The colors that are more muted are the older files, like, um, and they get brighter as they get more recent. I think it is like, more than a day old, uh, less than a day old, less than an hour old is the uh, filtering on that. And then you can also get some additional information about like how many counts for what types of uh, files if found. And then um, kind of finally here, um, you can see this tree view, which is one of the first things that we looked at. So you can get a nice tree view of, uh, you know, a folder if you're, if you're wanting to see how that's set up. And you can specify the depth on that too, like if you, especially if you're working in like node or any kind of um, project where all the dependencies are going to be included. Um, you want to limit uh, how far you go into like say node modules, for example, because you could just get, um, you know, page after page after page of output from a, a tree view if you do that. Um, but anyway, this is very well documented. So um, I just recommend checking out their documentation. Uh, they have pretty good links too on how to um, customize the colors on this. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, I think I spent an additional 15 minutes or something and went through and just kind of muted a bunch of the colors. Um, I feel like the this view is kind of, you're getting the full rainbow here with the reds and yellows and khakis and greens and blues. So I just kind of muted all that down a bit. And um, the, the second big thing you're gonna to wanna to install is, is this power level 10K theme. Um, but this is a theme for Oh My Zish, which is a, a tool for customizing the Z shell. So you kind of need to do that whole dependency chain first before you can play around with this. So um, the place to start is uh, just going to be installing Z shell, which is pretty straightforward. And, um, and then just changing your shell to BZ shell. And after you do that, you want to make sure you kind of re uh, source or reopen your terminal so that you can um, b make sure you're using Z shell. And then once you've got that installed, um, you can come over here and uh, to the Oh My Zish uh, tool. And uh, it's very easy to get that installed. You basically just run this script, uh, uh, or you run this command that's gonna rely on curl, and it'll just pull it all down and install it for you. And um, this is just a, a nice framework for like customizing Z shell in general that um, supports plugins and themes and uh, a bunch of other things. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it might be worth uh, poking around in it a bit. Uh, but yeah, it's got a lot of nice features on its own. And then um, 
power level 10k is just a theme that uh, you can use with Oh My Zish. Um, and it's actually um, just a really nice wrapper for another theme called power level 9k. Uh, and it makes it really easy to get it all set up. It, it gives you a nice kind of installation wizard that you can walk through and uh, choose exactly what you want your prompt to look like and what kind of information you want to include, like where you want it to be, if you want it to be all on one line or multiple lines. Uh, so yeah, it's just a really cool um, tool that makes it easy to get going really fast um, and not have to fumble around uh, figuring out how to set a bunch of uh, config settings. It just does it all for you. And you can kind of see here what that looks like. It's going to take you through these choices here. And, and as you do that, it'll just build out your uh, prompt for you. So, um, but yeah, installing that's pretty straightforward. Essentially, you will um, install it as an Oh My Zish theme, and they show you how to do that. And then um, in your um, uh, .zshrc file, you will just set your theme to be um, power level 10K. And it'll be obvious where to do that because by default, Oh My Zish is going to go in and set a theme. So you just have to replace the one that's already there. And then um, I believe if you just open a new terminal after you have it installed, it'll automatically kick off and take you through the configuration process. Uh, but if it doesn't, you can use this command here, uh, p10k configure, and that'll walk you through it. And it's a really nice process. You, at any point, you can restart it. Um, and if you... Uh, if you find out you're really deep into it and uh, you don't like the way it's set up or you just want to see how something's going to work, like you can go all the way through it. And then if you don't like it, you can just run it again and it'll go, it'll walk you through the whole thing again. I think it's maybe a dozen different choices and it takes, uh, I don't know, a few three to five minutes or something to do the whole thing. But once you've done it, you'll have a really nice looking prompt. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it's worth doing. I think this whole process takes about, uh, I would say a couple, an hour to two hours um, to get it all set up the way you want. Um, and that's including a little bit of time to just make some tweaks. Um, but yeah, I just find it to be, um, to make my development experience much more pleasant and also include a lot of information that's very relevant uh, to me um, that you don't get by default. Like, um, yeah, I, I just find it really helpful to know you know exactly what directory I'm in, if I'm in version control or not, what branch I'm on, uh, what kind of changes have happened in that branch. Um, just having the icons next to the files, um, I, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm a visual person, so just being able to see uh, really quickly like uh, what the files are without having to read the whole name or like go down this um, kind of steer, you know, uh, jagged edge here to look at the um, extensions on the files to figure out what type of file they are. Uh, I just find it really nice to be able to like quickly at a glance know kind of what I'm looking at. So like I, I, I work in a whole bunch of different languages. So um, like sometimes I don't even remember what I wrote a project in. So if I can just quickly look into the folder and like see what kind of icons are popping up in there, um, then it makes it really easy for me to know, uh, you know, what that project was written in. Another thing that'll happen to me too, especially working um, in a Unix is like, uh, Frequently I'll have dependencies or things that I've installed um, and I'll go in and want to make some tweak to it. And um, it's not uh, immediately obvious that it's version controlled, but with this kind of setup, because it'll show you your version control icon right there and like what branch you're on, um, it's really obvious right away when I'm in uh, working under version control and when I'm not, when I'm moving around in the unfamiliar territory in the uh, file system. Uh, so yeah, that's, there's definitely a lot more you can do with this um, and really trick it out to be like exactly, uh, you know, what you need to fit your uh, work style. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is just something I always like to do with any new system uh, that I set up. So yeah, thanks for following along. I'll include all the links to um, everything that I covered in this down below in the description. And uh if you uh, like the video, uh, you know, hit subscribe. If you want to be notified as new videos come out, hit the little notification bell. Uh, click like or the thumbs up if you liked it. If you hated it, hit the thumbs down. Uh, either way, it helps out the channel. So <laughs> don't bother me if you let me know you hated it. Uh, also, if you have questions or comments, just drop those below uh, the video. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.